I am beginning a new series, a series set not that long ago, getting gradually closer and closer to the present in a galaxy the same as this one. And that series is to be called The Bizarre, The Beautiful and The Bat Grey, or BBC for short, which holds no link to my national broadcaster. Each episode will be a year in itself of the Premier League, and I will take a moment point of discussion or sentiment from each of those seasons and talk about it a bit more, revisit the event itself and have a chat about some of the salient points and wider issues that um, came to the fore with that incident itself. And of course, we'll have a good look at the cards, sticks and ticks associated with the protagonists of each story. So, enter the Premier League. No, really, enter the Premier League. And this episode, the 1992-1993. For me, people criticising the British are like people criticising your friends and family. Like, I, I, I may do it all the time, um, but I'm a, I'm a massive hypocrite and I don't like hearing it from others. But when people say about a lack of culture and the fact that England or Brits are probably net takers from the world, I, I can hold my hands up and say there's some merit in that. We have a dodgy colonial past, um, but we have had some important contributions to the arts with Shakespeare, Queen, My Sports Compendium, Bowie and the Beatles, but it's that dodgy colonial past that we can't shake off and we don't really export much. But there is one British export that trumps all, the Premier League, the most watched sporting competition in the world. The birth of the Premier League was announced in February 1992 and had a very interesting and slightly illicit backstory in which the Big Five of English football, this might sound slightly familiar to the European Super League stuff in 2021, the Big Five, Man United, Arsenal, Spurs, yeah, Spurs, Liverpool and Everton, decided to form their own league and remove themselves from the perceived constraints of the Football League, which had been established in 1888. This would save them having to share out the money with the other 87 professional clubs at the time in a more equal manner. Although it can't be doubted that money was at the core of it, I do feel that the, they saw the potential product that was on offer and with the system the way it was, I think they saw that it was being grossly undervalued as a financial thing and a marketing just interest thing. In 1991-1992, the year before the Premier League came into being, Arsenal, a huge club, their annual turnover was only £1.5 million. Now, British broadcasting heavyweights, BBC, ITV, were negotiating a deal, but in the end, it was, at the time, a very small afterthought, B Sky B, who put it all on the Prem and landed a £304 million five-year deal at the time. This was a huge sum of money. It was a massive gamble at the time, but in the end, I think we can look back and say it wasn't a particularly bad investment. Onto the football itself, the opening day of the Premier League was Saturday the 15th of August 1992, in which Sheffield United played Manchester United at Bramall Lane. A brilliant usage of your time, it will only probably take you about 15 to 20 minutes to read through the whole thing. I'll leave a link on the page, is to read this BBC page from 2017, when for the 25th anniversary of the Premier League, the real BBC, not this episode series, relived the opening weekend of the Premier League, that August 1992, in real time, as if they do, as part of their BBC sport coverage, they do every weekend during the season. It's a play-by-play -play of the weekend's events, and although tongue-in-cheek, I really, really, really love the contemporaneous description of the events, as well as some of the amusing forecasts that are detailed. But that sort of time travel frame of speaking, I mean, is it's not really a surprise, considering Back to the Future is my favorite, very unoriginal favorite film of all time. <laughs> As for the match itself, of which this ticket, I've just brought this ticket onto the screen a bit ago, as you can see, the ticket is produced in different colours. Here's a blue one. I've seen a purple one as well. 
Um, it's a simple design, but I really enjoy this item. My, my favorite, my favorite color is probably the red. Um, but they're all, they're all so similar and they're all sort of a slightly pastel shade. This match is known, probably if you're watching it, you may well know, Brian Dean actually scored the first Premier League goal ever in the fifth minute of this match. And in all honesty, it was a pretty terrible goal to concede. It was a Rory Delap style throw, dealt with pretty inadequately by the Man United defence and then headed in. He also scored a penalty before half-time in the match. And although Mark Hughes pulled one back in the second half, the final score ended 2-1 and... Man United begun the Premier League with a defeat, although they were to win it um, at the end of that season. The programme itself is a very interesting read, and although it would be massive, it would be a massive understatement to say that the league had humble beginnings, which obviously it didn't, it doesn't really give off the vibe of the polished juggernaut that it is today when we see, obviously, you know, really expensive watch sponsors airlines. The, the nature of the adverts within the programmes here are really quite local and far away from what you'd expect from a Premier League. The, the main sponsor uh, are someone called Presto Tools, which are just a local local Sheffield local Sheffield company. And you can see sort of five a side pitches being being advertised. It's a it's almost got a really more innocent, non-commercialised feel to it. Now if you're looking at the front cover, you may wonder why um, Brian Dean, Dave Bassett and Brian Gale are dressed like this in Christmas attire. Now, Bassett had said in a press conference the previous week that the team only get going after Christmas, hence in an effort to try and get the season off to a good start, the club celebrated Christmas in the midweek before the start of the new season. This, this is even referenced in the flashback I mentioned earlier. Um, and... The Premier League didn't have a licensed sticker album yet, actually, with the first um, official Premier League album being released the following season. But there is an album for English football released um, for this season, and that's Panini's Football 93. Here are Brian Dean and Brian Gale. The two Bryans. These are the representative stickers of them from this album, Football 93. And I like this album. Um, it's actually, they're quite nice. They're, they're a bit bigger than um, the typical more square Merlin Premier League stickers. And they, I like that because it gives it a bit more of an opportunity to show the fantastic retro strips in the photos, which I really quite enjoy. Pop them there. And as for the as for the album itself, it's quite it's quite an interesting album actually. It's um they describe them as giant sized stickers, which I'm not entirely convinced about. But if you can see It's a nice spread. You can see the Manchester United page there. Let's bring that all into view. And then the Sheffield United page. Again, bringing that all into view. And you can see Brian Gale and Brian Dean. One thing I do like about this album is you can just see in the profile picture, or the bio rather, the transfer value, which is quite unique. And to think, Brian Dean, transfer value, £1.5 million. I mean, with the way that English players are valued, the old English tax now, he'd probably be about £85 million at that point um, now, which is crazy when you think about it. As for the Premier League, although it's a behemoth now. The English game prior to its inception had suffered a considerable degree of scrutiny with tragedies like Hazel and Hillsborough still relatively fresh in the mind. Hooliganism was also rife and although it was a calculated gamble to start the Premier League by the powers that be, it was no mean by no means guaranteed to succeed. 
This is said as much in the programme notes by Rick Parry, the league's chief executive, where he says that the overriding message is that they want to take football into the next century, um, but it's going to take time. And it, they want everyone to be quite patient as it will take time until their vision truly comes to the fore. I think it's I think it's fair to say that they did they did succeed in taking football into the next century, um, for better or worse. I mean the Premier League does have its shortcomings. We, you know, money has become a massive element within football, within sport all over the world. Um, but I think definitely there has been more good with the Premier League than bad, and you can really see how it's turned into this polished entertainment system that as I said earlier is the most watched um, sporting league in the world it forms a huge part of our lives in this country and I'm sure it forms a huge part of people's lives abroad as well um, so yeah this is the first episode of this series uh, let me know what you thought um, let me know what you think we're going to cover next um, I hope you've enjoyed it let me know if you like the um, BBC link that I spoke about earlier I'll leave it below it really is a fantastic use of your time um, and yeah tell me about your favorite tickets cards stickers albums and I'll see you again soon for the next episode all right bye bye